Hey, welcome, welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. However, what I do know is that this is a continuation of my photo inspiration collaboration series and if you checked out the what is that piece of hair doing if you checked out the thumbnail the title and possibly even the description you know that this is round three with the ever so beautiful Chelsea now it's my turn to choose the photo this time round so, the question is, what photo have I chosen? Have I remembered to make the intro black and white? Are you confused that you're watching me in black and white? Is this the first one of these that you've watched? And, most importantly, if you are watching me in black and white, what does this looks like? Looks like? Lord. What does this look like in a glorious Technicolor? Uh, well, for these answers and more, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and enjoy. Because uh, you're in exactly the right place. Here comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Still ridiculously hot in my kitchen, so the fan is on. I am trying to remember to talk a little bit louder than I normally do, um, but I will try and tweak the audio as much as I can post-edit. Um, but it might be an idea just to put the subtitles on or try headphones if I am a little bit quiet for you. Right. Today is uh, round three with Chelsea on my photo inspiration uh, collaboration series uh, and it was my turn to choose the photo this time I will stick it up there as I happen to be leaning this way if I wince quite a bit today it's because as well as the arthritis in my spine and my fibro uh, yesterday morning I pulled something in my lower back so I'm <sighs> I'm a hot mess, folks, in more ways than one. Um, anyway, that's the picture, which I absolutely fell in love with now. Obviously, on your screen, you may be seeing the colours slightly different to me, but what I'm seeing is uh, two different shades of purple, a pinky purple and a bluey purple, a couple of shades of green, and that, that lovely sort of um, kind of rustic brown path. And I'm pretty sure that my mum could tell you exactly what all of those are, but I haven't got a Scooby. There's certain flowers I recognise, my favourites, you know, freesias, carnations, roses, tulips, pansies, uh, irises, orchids, although I'm not fond of them. Lilies, not fond of them. White lilies are funeral flowers. Ooh, don't know why women have them as their, as their wedding. Anyway, not talking about that right now. We're talking about this. Um, so that's the picture that I sent across. Chelsea, thankfully, loved it. Um, I have had to, I, I did have to push this back by a couple of days um, because I got added to a big group collab um, and they were uploading on the day that we'd originally planned to upload but bless her, Chelsea was absolutely fine about shifting the day because I didn't want to detract from our collaboration I didn't want people to you know not not go and see her particularly if you've not seen her before I wanted to send as many of my beautiful 4F family her way as possible so the the rules that I came up with for this collab are you can only use colours in the picture you cannot add to them, but you don't have to use all of the colours if you don't want to. Okay. Um, now I'm 
a teaching channel. Uh, I tend to, because these, these photo collaborations would be hella long if I was teaching as well as everything else, um, I do tend to give you a little bit here and there. I go, I, you know, I go over the eye shape, etc. when we start. Um, but it's not as in-depth as my usual tutorials. Okay. Um, the two palettes that I've chosen to use are the Mini Breaker for the purples and my Certified Affinity 2 for the greens. There's also quite a nice browny grey in here which I might use to be the path. Um, yes, now, all I've got on my face so far is washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed. And on my eyes, I'm actually using, I'm trying out the, uh, the Crow and Pebble eye base in white. They do, um, this one's called Cotton. Um, they do a number of different colours, from white right through to a really, really deep shade. So you should be able to find one close to your skin tone. Um, you all know I usually use MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot, but that does have a slight yellow tinge to it. Um, and what I loved about this, it amazed me, let me zoom you in a minute. It amazed me when I tried this out with the loose pigments. But this has been on for a few minutes now. And it's, it's not really creasing, which normally by now I'd have a really thick line right through here. But I haven't, which is lovely. Um, I don't put it on very thick, as you can see, I sort of I blend it out. I could do it thicker than this if I wanted to, but personal preference, I just prefer doing it like this. Right, let's go through eye shape, etc. Um, obviously with my chronic pain, I do blend a bit slower than most people, and with my back being super, super bad today, I may be super, super slow. Uh, but do feel free just to speed me up using the speed widget. I won't be offended because, let's face it, I won't even know. <laughs> right, now, I've actually got deep set eyes, or they're sometimes called double lids now. I've started to hear them being referred to as that. A lot of people think they've got hooded lids, when what, what, in, what they've actually got are deep set eyes like myself. I just want to explain the differences to you because mm -hmm. we do have the same issues. We have the transference of shimmers onto the upper lid. You know, when we cut our lid, we can't just cut across the socket. We have to come up onto the upper lid. Um, and even using glitter glues, you will get a bare patch right through here, usually. Now, when I look straight ahead, with my brows relaxed, you can see all of my mobile lid. You can't see much of it, but you can see it from inner corner to outer corner. So I don't have hooded lids. It's only if your static lid completely covers your mobile lid right down to the lash line that you have either a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. If, like me, you can see your mobile lid, even if you can only see a little bit of it, then you have deep set eyes. I'm just going to show you what I mean. This is the eye I'm blinding, so I can close this one um, and still see what I'm, what I'm talking about. If I cover my mobile lid, and close my eye. You can see I've got as much lid space again that folds back away. And if I cover my static lid and do the same thing, you can see I've got lid space there that tucks back in as well. So that's what I mean about having a deep set eye or a double lidded eye. Okay. Now you can still follow my tutorial if you have hooded lids. All of my tutorials are hooded lid friendly because I, I appreciate the issues that you have. If you don't have a mobile lid, or you don't have enough of a mobile lid for what you want, get a brush, like something like this, flat top brush, or a really, really fine pencil brush, and just sketch out where you want your crease to fall. So you're creating a mobile lid on your static lid. Obviously that's gonna reduce the space between your, your crease and your brow, so just use slightly smaller blending brushes than I do. Okay, and that should sort you out. Right, enough wittering. Just time to put some colour on my face. Oh, hay fever and fibro. My eyes are running like nobody's business today. Right, I'm going to start off with 
Um, in the description box I've got which brushes do I recommend. Uh, and there's a set from AliExpress that I have linked. And this is uh, the tapered blending brush from that brush number six. And I'm going to start off by going into the Jawbreaker palette and I'm going to go into Foreplay, which is the pinky purple. Now, is this one of the pressed pigments? Let me have a look. I wish you wouldn't print it so damn small. Uh, Apple gum. Bite me, foreplay, oral, orange crush, and purple punch. Okay, so pretty much most of this palette is a pressed pigment. Which is fine, just so long as I know what I'm doing. So I've obviously I've tapped off. And I'm just gonna very lightly just press this and tap and move. Because obviously I've not set the eyeshadow base that I've put on with powder because I want these colours to be as punchy as possible. So I'm just tapping them on initially just to place them and then I'll do some very light twirly blending. Now if the, um, the shadow you're using or pigment, as in this case, starts to blend away. Blend till you've got the edges soft how you want them, and then if you need to, just pick up a little bit more pigment and just pat it into place and just keep moving the brush around by lightly mm. tapping it to blend and to build the colour up. Okay? And I'm holding the brush right at the end so I put as little pressure on my eyelid as possible. Now, where I said I'm blind in this site, it got pulled around an awful lot when I was a kid, and when I say a kid I'm talking 40 years ago now. Um, so I've got super super deep crease in here, as you can see, and I do have issues with shadows skipping and my usual blending not working. So I do, particularly if I'm putting a, um, a shimmer in that area, I do have to stretch the lid out. Uh, but don't do that if the blending will work for you because otherwise you will end up with deep creases like I've got and I can assure you they're not fun and they only ever get worse as the years progress. I really like this shade. It's my first time using the mini jawbreaker. I've used the, the, the big jawbreaker a couple of times now. Um, I've got one film which... has it gone up yet? No, I don't think it has yet. I've got a film which I was editing yesterday but I've got so many collabs in at the moment. I'm kind of running behind with my actual films. Um, so I think this will actually go up before the main Jawbreaker will, but that's okay. I do like these pigments. Right, I've got a clean washcloth here that I'm just going to wipe the brush onto to get some of the pigment off of the, the bristles because I'm going to use the same brush to go in and continue the colour along here. And I'm going to go in, you can see it has stained the bristles a little bit, but, you know. Where colours say they're not safe for immediate eye area, usually what that means is if they are a matte or a shimmer or a satin, it means they're likely to stain your skin. And if you have very sensitive skin, you might find it irritates you, so... Um, Put some on the, the crook of your elbow uh, and just see, leave it there for like 12 hours and just see if you react to it. Um, but they're probably stained. But if a glitter, if a pressed glitter says not safe for use in the immediate eye area, don't use it in the eye area because it means that the glitter particles are craft size rather than makeup size 
and if they get into your eye they could scratch your cornea. Just a tip there for you. Right, so I'm just going to go in with this purple. What I have noticed with uh, this palette and Jawbreaker is they're very, very firmly pressed. Um, which in one respect is good because they're less likely to break when they're in transit to you. But it can be a bit of a bugger sometimes getting the pigment up onto your brush. Um, so just, just bear that in mind if you're getting this palette or if you have this palette already. The reason I sit back to look at it <clears throat> is because obviously your eyes are not symmetrical so I want to make sure that the shape I'm doing will work both sides and that it's even. I like to leave sort of four or five mils below the base of my brow there. Um, if I'm doing an editorial look I'll take it right up to my brow but if I'm just doing a blended look um, I like to leave a bit of a gap there just so that the highlight shows up more because I do like to put a shimmery highlight under the tail of my brow. So this is what you see so this is what I mean about getting the actual pigment onto the brush sometimes it can be a bit of a, a bit of a challenge when they're very firmly pressed because there's hardly any kick up in the pan at all. <clears throat> but just be patient, just keep dipping in. Um, I know some of the, the Revolution shadows in the Emily edit, for example. Um, I watched her reveal on her Wants palette. And she said she they'd um, deliberately done all of the colours slightly less pigmented and a bit more firmly packed. <clears throat> so that for beginners, you didn't suddenly get Whoomph, a load of colour that you've then got to blend out. So those are actually designed for being built up. Um, and you just have to use similar techniques if you've got a palette that's very firmly pressed like this one is. <coughs> Sorry folks, I seem to be losing my voice. Let me have a quick slurp. <coughs> <clears throat> silicon straw by the way good for the environment and all that although there are times when plastic straws are a necessity for disabled people because the alternatives just wouldn't work appropriately right I'm just taking the pigment off of the, or as much of the pigment off of the brush as I can. And I'm just going to very lightly buff along the top there just to soften that edge slightly. I've got to admit I'm really liking this chrome and pebble base. I was going to wait until I'd finished my soft ochre paint pot before I buy some more but I think I can see me buying some more of that. Um, Crown Pebble did actually give me a discount code as well, it's all listed in my uh, description box. So, um, go and have a look at the, if you've not already seen it, have a look at my Crown Pebble Pastel Loose Pigments um, tutorial. Mm -hmm. And then you can see the kind of uh, products they sell. Well, I find it anyway. Right, I'm going to grab my Morphe M562 and I'm just going to close the mini jaw breaker and I'm going to go into my Affinity 2 palette and I'm going to come into Shazad, this green here at the bottom.
pick some of this up. And then I'm going to run this along the crease. Obviously if you've moved your crease up then follow wherever you've made your crease line. And then just tiny tiny little circles going towards the nose as you blend in and then away from the nose as you blend out. This helps to gently move the skin on your eyelid around so you don't get any gaps when you're blending. So, Chelsea. Now, obviously this is the third time I've collabed with her on this series. And, I mean, the girl can... I mean, she's, she's got a lot of um, revolution palettes and she does looks with them that you would think were done with really, really high-end palettes. She makes those palettes jump up and sing, she really does. I don't know how she does it. Um, I mean, I can normally get a good look from a revolution palette, but the looks that she, she does just completely blow mine out of the water, they really do. Um, absolutely lovely girl, really, really sweet. I don't think I've ever heard her say a bad word about anybody on her channel. Um, and uh, as I said, some of the looks she comes up with are just astounding. Um, she lives up north, so another UK accent for you. I've got quite a weird accent. Mine's a mixture of Yorkshire, Wales and Southern England. So sometimes when I say words they have a Welsh twang, sometimes they don't have a Welsh twang. Um, you know, favourite sometimes can sound Welsh and then occasionally favourite can sound English. Um, it just depends what mood I'm in on the day as to... I don't even realise myself how my accent changes until you know I say something like cushion and, and hubby starts giggling and I'm like oh Welsh again he went yeah right you can see what I mean now about how those deep creases cause like tiger striping so I do have to just stretch the lid out but if you see I've stretched it right to here where I let go that's just this inner part of the, the lid here, so it shows you just how much of the lid is actually creased over. And this was from them pulling my eye around when I was five years old. So, be gentle with your eyes, people. But yes, I absolutely adore some of the stuff that she also does. She comes out with... There's a couple of times that I've seen her use a palette, and it, it's, it's a palette that hasn't called to me. And then she'll put a, a film up with a look that she's done. And I'm just like, that looks amazing. I need that palette. Um, so, yeah. So, you know, you always get... I don't think she's got very many, if any, high-end palettes. Which is, is great if you are on a budget. Because she's showing you, you can produce exactly the same kind of looks with you know palettes that I mean the revolution palettes start at four quid for goodness sake so mm. and let's be honest once it's on your lid you could tell people you've used Jeffree Star you could tell people you've used uh, Natasha Denona or Pat McGrath because unless it's a unique shade that only they have. Who's going to know once it's on your eyes? Right, I'm just cleaning this brush off. And I'm going to grab... I need a flatter mm. brush. Let me have a look. Which brush do I want to use? I think I'm going to go in with 
one of these Morphe M32 ones. My phone is going bloody nuts down here. What on earth is going on? Oh, chat that like I'm in. People have woken up around the world. Okay. Right, I'm just going to go back into the mini breaker and I'm going to pick up some of this hot fudge colour here. For the path. And I'm just going to pop some of this just in the middle of the lid and sort of blend it into the green. It's weird, in real life I can absolutely see the difference between the two colours but on my viewfinder they're looking remarkably similar. So I'm hoping when I get to the edit stage that they're looking remarkably similar. Can but hope. Right, so I'm cleaning this brush off and I'm going to go back into the uh, Affinity 2 and into the bright green Shiraz colour. I'm just going to grab a little, because I'm obviously blind in this so I can't close it because I can't see what I'm doing. I'm going to have a little mirror just down here that I look down into so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm just going to pop this beautiful bright green just onto the inner corner here. And as you can see I've decided to go for an all matte look today because that can actually be really quite stunning. I like this a lot. Yes, if you've not already watched Chelsea, you really do have to go across and check out her channel. She's got, I mean, the woman has skills, let's be honest, and she's, she's young enough to be my daughter, bless her heart, but she's still happy to clap with this old woman. You know, 45 years old, and she's in her 20s, so... I mean, the girl, If I wish I had skills that she's got at her, at, at her age. I wish I'd had those skills. Because I would probably be a hell of a lot better than I am now. Right. I'm going to pause you just while I put some foundation and etc. on. And I'll be back to finish off this eye look with you. So, yeah, please don't go anywhere. And I am back. Purple brows just felt appropriate, darling. Right, I'm going to go back in with, if I can find it, that flat top brush I showed you earlier. And I'm going to dip into Hot Fudge, which is the brown that I used for the path. I'm just going to run that tight under my bottom lashes. And do the same thing this side. I've not been able to wear eyeliner for a few months now. Um, my fibro has been making my eyes really watery and combining that with hay fever. And yeah, it's just not happening. Um, so what I've been doing is taking a very dark colour under the eye and just running it up just carefully to the edge of where my crease comes to. Because what this does, it gives an almost imperceptible darker column. And it sort of it, it gives the same effect as having the winged liner. It still draws the eye out without having to actually use liner. So if like me you are struggling in this weather to keep liner on, that's a way that you can actually um, have the same look without having to worry about it being all down your face within five minutes. Now, this is a it's a flat top but chunky brush. This was actually the brush in the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. 
and I'm going to dip into a mixture of foreplay and the purple punch so the two colours I used up here and I'm just going to buff that very lightly along that bottom lash line just to continue the colour down and to soften the look of that quite harsh dark line we've got there. I'm just going to take the colour off of the brush just to blend this one out a little bit more without dragging the colour too far down my face. Okay, it's highlight time. Ooh, now the question is which highlight? Uh, da, 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 da. I think I'll go with my Becca one. This is uh, it's one of their light chaser highlighters, and this one is Rose Quartz Flashes Seashell. Looks like that. So it's a it's a very very light champagne pink with um, like a champagne it's a very very light pink base with a light champagne shift to it so it works really well if like me you are super super pale but are neutral to cool toned because all too often the golds would be a little bit too warm but if you go for a, a champagne gold because it's got more of a white reflection to it it will actually work I like to continue my colour under the tear duct just because I find it's more flattering for my eye shape and tuck a bit up under the tail of the brow this is just a really cheap lip brush that I got from eBay yonks ago but it works really well for the detail work like so right I'm going to pause you one last time while I chuck some more of this highlight all over my face put some mascara and lipstick on do something with my hair and I'll be back with my final look so I'll see you right now hey I am back just checking no lipstick on the teeth. If you're wondering what the lippy is, by the way, it's... Oh, this is... I've, I've already gone through one of these, and I've got this one that I'm using, and I've got a backup just in case. Uh, it's one of the Revolution um, lipsticks, and it's in the shade Prime. Now, this is a bang-on dupe for Charlotte Tilbury um, Pillow Talk, which, for me, is actually probably one of my perfect nudes so I just thought I didn't want to detract from this gorgeous eye look what do you think I'll put the picture up there again this is my finished look for my interpretation of that gorgeous picture would you have done it like this or would you have done it differently let me know in the comments below um, how you would have chosen to represent that. Would you have used all the colours? Would you have only used some of them? Um, let me know. I'd, I'd really like to hear what you would have done if you were the person collabing with me. Now, talking of the person collabing with me, that is, of course, the beautiful Chelsea. And while you're watching me, you can bet your bottom dollar that I am watching her. And probably thinking, why didn't I think of doing my eyes the way she's done hers? That looks really good. Good lord, woman, where has your creativity gone to? So, hmm, yeah. So, whilst I have many other films that you could watch, before you watch any more of mine, please go across and... Give Chelsea some of the 4F family love 
that you so often pour my way. Thank you so much. If, of course, you are here from Chelsea's, hi, hello, how are you? I hope you enjoyed it here. I hope you feel welcomed. Uh, I hope you'd like to check out maybe another couple of my films. Uh, so I mean films and films. I just... Uh, I'm slightly nutty, half Welsh, half Yorkshire, but living in the south of England, but... Uh, rambles regularly. Um, occasionally wears hats. And uh, uh, sometimes wigs. But not when it's hot. Far too hot for a wig. Right, um, if you are one of my subscribees, or if you are considering being one of my subscribees, uh, please, please, please double check that um, you are definitely subscribed because people have had the issue that they are being unsubscribed or they are clicking subscribe and then when they refresh the page they're not subscribed even though they literally seconds before click subscribe. Not quite sure what YouTube are up to right now, but they're not being nice to the smaller creators, that is for sure. So, uh, please double check you're subscribed, please double check that your notification bell is clicked, and that you have selected all notifications, because if you select some notifications, uh, that means no notifications. Did I say notifications any more times in this film? Yes, quite properly. I think this foundation's a bit too pale for me, actually. It's not often you'll hear me say that. If you're wondering what it is, it's uh, the ColourPop uh, No Filter Foundation in shade Fair 15. Um, I like it, but it's only good for short wear times for me because it does break down. So it's great for using when you're filming because it stays on long enough for you to look good and then you can take it off and you're not wasting an expensive foundation uh, because I do need to go out somewhere this evening and if I leave this on for another seven hours I'm um, going to be looking like the wreck of the Hesperus yeah right okay that's enough blethering from me all that remains for me to say as ever is you'll stay fabulous and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.